we built this structure to hang one of our 12 by 12 walls on. And I wanted to walk you through this a little bit because what we found over the last two or three or four years of, of doing this business is that one of the cruxes is where the wall, where you end up putting the wall. And it's a space constraint and also typically a uh, infrastructure constraint. Like a stick structure, for instance, doesn't really work. Say a two by four wall with like sheetrock. So what we, what, we, what we did here was we drove all of the force into the floor with these brackets. And then all we've done up here behind the brackets is that we've tied it to structural layers of the concrete brick, not to withstand the, the 2,000 pounds of force, but only to secure it or to create rigidity. So what we want is we want that, that bracket right there to be absolutely rock solid static so that, so that there's no wobble at the end because a quarter inch of wobble up there creates two inches of wobble out here at the end, like as it, as it just magnifies out at the edge of the boards. So we're just looking for the most viable and creative solutions to get everybody the wall of their dreams. So right now we're going to assemble and attach the hanging version of the 12 by 12. Uh, and you, you can just watch how, that, how that's done. So when you uncrate your hanging wall, uh, it's going to look like this. And these, with the exception of these center beams and the kickboard will just be eight feet wide for the, for the eight foot wide version. So the 12 by eight, these just shrink down. These uh, tie rod plates will come pre-assembled and the hoist comes assembled like this with, uh, it's spooled with the Dyneema line on it and it's, it's ready to go. It can mount on either side, either here or over here like this. So you'll decide where you want your handle. Do you want to, do you want to put your, do you want to adjust it from the left side or the right side? I'm going to, I'm going to start by pre-assembling all these cross beams. There's eight of them. Um, and then we can start to put together the side beams and we'll, we'll mount the kickboard in a bit. This job will be made easier with an impact wrench with a three quarter inch driver and a box end, a box end wrench. Earplugs too. So now we've done kind of uh, the most tedious part, just getting those center beams pre-assembled. Um, and now we're going to decide where to put the kickboard and mount it and set the hoist on it. So this goes on, you just meet, match that little notch right here and the handle goes on. And then you can tighten it wherever you want. That'll just be on standby until we start hanging stuff. So these, these pills are a little bit oblong, these pill shaped holes. So where I just put the, hoi, the kickboard, I put it down as low as it can go. It could also mount up into these holes. So your kickboard could be up here if you wanted it. We just want it low here. So, if, uh, and these, these holes adjust, it allows this to go up a little, uh, up and down a little bit. So now's the time to check this with a level and make sure that you're, now's the time to level it basically. Uh, right now we're just, I'm just putting in the, these back uh, stabilizer brackets for the kick, kickboard. So we're finishing up uh, attaching the hinges to this bottom bracket, this bottom hinge bracket for the, for the wall side. Next thing, we'll put these and mount the hinges onto the kickboard. So we're just making sure that this is all square right now. Um, away from the wall. So this is one of the critical things that you want to look for when you're mounting the hanging version. And you want the hoist 
to basically come straight up to this and not have it over here hanging or over here so that the hoist actually spools evenly. So we finished bolting the, the framework down to the ground. We suggest that if you don't really know how to put concrete anchors in, you, you get a, a general contractor or somebody that does um, so, so that everything is super secure. Um, now, we're going to, now we're going to start attaching the panels and kind of building out the framework. Now we've kind of started to flesh out the, the base of this. Next step is to get these side plates on. As you're putting these parts together, this plate on, um, keep everything loose. Make sure that everything is um, fitting before anything gets tightened down. It's, this is a crucial spot right here. This plate um, connects the two side plates and also where the Dyneema fits onto the board. And so everything is tied together. So just keep everything loose. Let's fit it all together. And then, and then we'll tighten it down after. So this is about, this is where we want to leave this for a second. We're going to go do the other side. Leave all of this finger tight. Um, this is about, as, this is most of the complexity kind of taken care of here. We're going to go over and do the same thing over here. And then we're just going to system, systematically build it out a little bit more. And then finally put the rest of the cross beams on the top. Then the thing's ready to hang. Then you put wood on it, then your holds, you're done. So we just assembled. We fully finished the other side. It's cranked down, it's ready to go. Now we're gonna come back here. These are still loose. We're going to attach the attachment point for the Dyneema and raise the thing into place. So we've just put the pins in, and so we've, we've connected the, the attachment points to the Dyneema. And now we're just gonna raise the thing into place. So now we've raised the wall into place. You can see it's basically all the structure is there. We're gonna put the wood on next. What I notice is that the Dyneema is a little bit too long for this installation. We took this from our old shop. And so we'll, we'll adjust this by tying new knots. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to raise this up as high as I can. I am going to then use some, uh, some come alongs or some uh, ratchet straps to tie it into place so that it's safe to loosen these. And then I'm going to retie them when it's, this is about 55 degrees, I'll probably lower it down to 60. And at 60, deg at 60 degrees, I want this paw to be up near the top. So it'll, it, it, will, it will, I believe it, with this distance, we'll get probably 45 or 50 degrees of adjustment. So now we've, we've repositioned the rigging paw to be kind of in the middle. This is probably about 30, 30 degrees. So the rigging paw is now in the middle of where we want our climbing to be generally. This is made to equalize. Did a pretty good job on this one, it's dead flat. <laughs> if, it's, if your board is, if one of these is a little bit longer than the other, um, this, this rig will tip slightly. You don't want it any further than about 45, de <clears throat> 45 degree angle um, either way. So we're in the middle of installing the wood panels. Um, this process, it's gonna work. It's a little bit like, uh, tuning spokes on a, on a wheel. So there's, you're gonna, we're, it's going, everything should be tight when you go to put the wood on. The holes will pretty much always align, but these beams, you can see that they move up and down a little bit. So you'll want to, as you're moving around, if the hole isn't aligned with this, you might have a second person or somebody go up and, and hold this in position, at least for one of the holes. That's how you put the wood panels on. Uh, just be patient, it'll all come together and you're gonna put your holds on next.